So it's been a while since I did a video like this. It was supposed to be out a month ago, but stuff got in the way, and so I couldn't do it. But I want to show off some of the changes I made to the game kit in more detail. So you might want to set the video to full screen, just so you can see the text more easily. And this will mostly be concerning just the anime AI and the debug stuff. But I'll also go over something that is planned later, that I'm currently working on right now. So, um... One of the newest things is that there is now a... Enemies now have health bars for each enemy, and you know, also enemies now have a aggro range. I will show this off later, where basically, you know, this is an invisible range around them that basically decides if you cross into this area, it will set off a aggro cooldown. That basically determines if you are in combat or not. Once you step out, there's like, until like, 8 seconds that you can't do certain actions, like, not pause, you can still pause, but like, there's now an ability system, I did sew it off in some of my other gifts for the project, where now if this aggro cooldown is active, you won't be able to change what abilities are set to the slots, this is a precaution. Damage is also calculated now based on source. And certain types will also determine what enemies they can affect. So what else? Let's see. Uh, it will set for like each attack now the health bars will be set for you know the wide based on the damage they take. Uh, is there anything else that I want to go over? Let, let's wait for it. Okay, yeah, it's done saving, so... Uh... The Igor AI is the only enemy AI that wasn't changed. I tried to, but it broke some stuff, so I'll probably try it again later. See if I can actually fix it. Yeah, but that's everything. The bug stuff. Um, most of this stuff I don't really feel like explaining, but I will sew off. So now there's like icons or slots rather. I'm gonna edit mood. When you click them, it'll create an object that follows your mouse, and. Basically, you can click certain objects for certain interactions. Oh uh, yeah, I'll sew this off with some other stuff later. But what else? Yeah, there's most of this stuff. Um, I'll try to go over in detail a little bit. This is for. This basically checks if the object you are clicking on that you know if it's a debug object, if it's a treasure chest, then you can edit the contents. And you know, this is where it actually happens. And there's something that has changed about treasure chest, which I will so soon. Let's see what else. Some different context is based on what screen you are on. I mentioned this in the devlog post. For example, this is if you are you know, normal edit mood, the cursor movement. Or if you're in a context menu, then, you know, context menu movement. This is for, um, basically, there's an object list, and pressing the number key, specifically four or six, will change those. Is there anything else in? Going over. This is just like a basic checks, you know, so if it's above above a certain amount, it won't roll over, you know, the negative values and such. 
She's like Stan Darby, you know. Something you do in programming. I left click, uh. Let's see. Oh, for like destroying objects. Spawning in them. Spawning context menu. And just like the basic edit mode stuff, like the icon and such. And this determines if you are selecting from the normal objects list or instead if like you're editing a chest. Yeah, and uh, that's basically it. Oh, and the objects. Uh, chests have changed a bit. So basically, the reveal animation used to be part of the chest. But because of that, they wouldn't play nice with the new grid system in edit mode. So I had to make it so that it was just an empty animation, and instead it will spawn the object that does the animation on top, and then set object is destroyed as soon as it finishes. But yeah, we will sew off some stuff. Just let me do a on here. Yep. And I will sew off the aggro range and the slots. You know, and interactions in edit mood. So we'll start up the game kit. And it's right here. We'll click this. There you go. Pretty neat, huh? Of course, the aggro range is right here, as you can see, yep. Oh yeah, you can't pause during the bug mode. Yeah, but that's it. Yep. Uh, thank you for watching. Oh, I forgot almost one last thing, I forgot to go over it, so... I'm going to be implementing a weather system into the game kit. It's going to use XML files which will store the map data. Reads map. You know, this includes general stuff like. Uh, I can't think of some stuff right now that's specifically not weather related, but there's gonna be a dictionary that will load the XML data based on what map you are in. I figured that was the best way to do it because logically you will only be in one layout at a time. You know, then there's the, of course, the stuff that's in practice. That might still be changed slightly, but you know it's gonna there's gonna be a specific chance of what recurring. You know that could be customizable, and then it will check like every say three to four minutes. I'm making it's gonna depend on how long the days are, because I'm also gonna be implementing a data system. It looks like you know if that is met, then you know do some weather. But also the other things. Uh, Let's see, so weather will also be climate and temperature based. So, you know, each map is going to have a climate type and a temp type. You know, climate's going to be dry and wet, you know, something in between, and temperatures are going to be like hot and cold, something in between, you know, and varying ranges in between, you know, like freezing, you know, scorching, you know, or something like that. So, you know, this will dictate, you know, what kind of weather you get. but. I'll also make it so that it determines a specific biome depending on the climate and temperature combination. Like, for example, if it's dry and hot, then that's a desert. Or if it's hot and wet, then that's a jungle. Which is, you know, basically a rainforest. And, you know, by if you studied, you know, in school, you know, climates. A rainforest is, you know, basically described as a climate that's wet, but it's hot. Oh, and the last thing, there will also be a temperature system. You know, like Don't Starve and No Man's Sky, or basically... For... This holds true for the opposite, but I'll use cold weather as an example, like cold climates that... If you are away from a heat source, like a campfire, and you don't have an item in your inventory, 
that basically acts as a portable temporary source of heat, eventually you're, you will get cold and you'll start to take damage. You know, it, it's a pretty basic concept, honestly. But yeah, as I said, thank you for watching and have a nice day.